Stick to the end and find out how to add over £4,100 to your bank balance. How much of your shopping do you do online? Once upon a time, we used to buy books and maybe the odd piece of computer software online. Now, I for one, do most of my shopping online. I hate going to the shops, and I'm sure you're the same. When did you last buy something on Amazon, for example? Last week? Yesterday? Today even? Aside from Amazon, which is undoubtedly one of the biggest players in the online shopping world, almost anywhere in the world, we still shop in many other online stores too. And we may not be doing it very smartly. Amazon's share of the market, in the UK at least, is about 30%. Yep, you heard right, 30%. Did you think it was higher? Me too. Now, whilst 30% is still staggering, what it means is we're spending 70% of our money elsewhere, on other websites, other stores, through other apps. Now, if I look at just the last 30 days, this is what I've bought online. Groceries, stationery, car insurance, travel insurance, clothes, protein powder, cinema tickets, meal through Deliveroo, listed my old car for sale, search for airport transfer prices, and even a pizza. Yes, I know I said a meal earlier, but a pizza deserves its own special mention, doesn't it? Typically, I figure out what I want and then search online for the store that offers the best deal for what I'm after. And here I'm searching for the best all-in price. By all-in price, I mean the total amount it's going to cost me. Some sites don't even include the VAT on the published headline price that you may be making a decision off of. And of course, there's delivery price, which varies depending on how much you're buying in total and where you're buying from. Once I've got a good picture of what it's actually going to cost me all-in, then I'll do the one thing that has made me over £3,000 without actually changing what I'm spending on. Rather than just tell you, I'll run you through an example. I know my car insurance is coming up for renewal, so I'll do the usual searches on comparison sites like Confuse.com, Go Compare, Money Saving Supermarket, and probably a few others. Then I'll also cover the direct only insurers like DirectLine or Aviva. Once I've decided who I'm buying from, i.e. which one gives me the best bang for my buck, I will then head over to a cashback site. Now these days I mostly use Top Cashback, though I occasionally use Quidco as well. I'll head over to the Top Cashback website, or use the app, and click through to the retailer I've decided to buy from. Once I've clicked through, I'm on the retailer's website and I'll continue with my purchase as normal, as if I'd gone to it directly in the first place. The next step is... No, there is no next step, that's it. You bought what you wanted to buy, then you just sit back and wait for that cashback to hit your account. In my example, I'd chosen Aviva to go with because they offered me the best policy at the time, but I used Top Cashback to click through to the Aviva website, completed my car insurance purchase, and then took that next step. No, you've fallen for it again. There is no next step. When are you gonna learn? I was now insured for my car and had peace of mind for another 12 months. Then after a few weeks, I've received an email from Top Cashback. My Aviva cashback had arrived into my Top Cashback account and I promptly withdrew it into my bank account. Now, just before the end of this video, I'll show you exactly what I've earned across the two cashback sites I've mentioned, Top Cashback and Quidco. You'll see it's over 4,100 pounds. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, which is all about helping you make the most of your finances. And I'll see you on the next one.